Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second edition of the Rankia Pro Euro Power Ceremony. We are excited to be here and to have been given the opportunity to acknowledge some of the asset management industry's most dedicated and successful professionals. 2021 was a challenging year for all of us in so many different ways. Nevertheless, the Rankia Pro Europe team hopes that you and your loved ones have stayed safe and healthy. Ideally, we would have loved to be hosting this hour ceremony live with all of you in attendance. However, we are so glad that you can at least join us for this digital edition. The three hours that we will be announcing today are Sales Manager of the Year, Fan Manager of the Year, and Fan Selector of the Year. These three categories are part of our monthly Professional of the Month interview series where we interview and present a different sales manager, fund manager, and fund selector on our website. At the end of the year, the 12 professionals in each category are eligible for a grand category award that we will announce shortly. In terms of how the winner is selected for each category, we open the polls to you, the public, and allow you to cast your vote for a one-month period, as I am sure many of you have done in the previous weeks. We receive over 1,000 votes for each hour category, so thank you for your participation. In addition to the public voting, we consider the traffic that the interview received on our website and the engagement on social media platforms such as LinkedIn. We combine these three measures into a single weighting to obtain a final score that we use to determine the winner. This hour ceremony is uniquely special as it highlights the professionals who were successful in adapting to our new environment while maintaining the highest standards required to work within the asset management industry. Well, I believe I have built up enough suspense, so let's begin with the awards. First, the Sales Manager of the Year. For a sales manager, client relationships are a top priority in their daily work. However, at the end of 2021, the new COVID variant for sales teams to adapt again to meet with current and future clients. We know it has been a difficult time and Ronka Pro is proud to be your partner in this journey. The three finalists in this category are Ivo van der Poel from PTIM Investments. Frederick Niemke from Mirai Asset Global Investments and Estefania Paolo from BNY Mellon and the 2021 Rankia Pro Sales Manager of the Year Award goes to Frederick Niemke from Mirai Asset Global Investments Congratulations Frederick! We are joined live by Frederick now in London as he accepts his award. Thank you very much, uh, Carla, for this uh, great news. Uh, hi, everyone, and many thanks, Frankia, for this amazing news. I'm uh, personally very proud by this uh, award, which uh, I'd like to accept on behalf of all my colleagues uh, working with me on the distribution side. Obviously, i also like to, to give a massive thank you to all other colleagues working in other departments for their continuous support and hard work. Um, obviously, our success and this prize are definitely the result of uh, all team members' contribution. Special thanks also to our portfolio managers and investment team for the hard work too and strong results. Uh, despite extreme market volatility, they have actually been able to generate solid performance and outperformance versus their benchmark over the three and uh, five years periods. Uh, maybe a few words at, um, at the group level. Uh, Mirea Asset continue to grow the business globally in Asia, uh, the US and in Europe here, 
and now manage close to 230 billion uh, US dollar. In Europe, uh, we are continuing to focus on delivering high quality solutions to our investors with both our actively managed uh, equity fund offering quality growth exposure to emerging markets, Asia, China and India, as well as our Global X ETF business that we have recently launched in Europe with a lineup of uh, top quality uh, UC thematic ETF that gives exposure to themes such as uh, disruptive technologies, people and demographics, physical environment, uh, sustainable themes. So with that, I, I really want to also take this opportunity to thank uh, all our clients and partners for their continuous trust and collaboration. And obviously, we very much look forward to continuing uh, working closely with them uh, in the future. Um, again, many thanks from Craft for these awards and on behalf of the team, uh, this is very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick, and congratulations again. Next up, the Fund Manager of the Year. A good fund manager must anticipate volatility and help investors build wealth with a firm eye on risk. Without a doubt, the 12 nominees in this category have done an amazing job during 2021. The three finalists in this category are Gauter van Overfeld from Bontobel Asset Management, Massimiliano Genesi from Copernicus WM, and Maisa Almidani from Pictet. And the 2021 Rankia Pro Fund Manager of the Year Award goes to Gauter van Overfeld from Boatable Asset Management. Congratulations, Gauter. Unfortunately, Gauter can't be with us today. So to accept his award on his behalf, please welcome Sergey Goncharov, Portfolio Manager at Bountable Asset Management. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really an honor to, to get this award uh, from such a respectable uh, uh, publication. It's really uh, an honor to be specifically uh, uh, marked as, as the Fund Manager of the Year in 2021, a very difficult year, uh, specifically in the world of fixed income. So as uh, investors increasingly looking to protect themselves uh, against, uh, you know, long term trends and inflationary scare uh, in the markets, it's really uh, deserving to be in emerging markets. And that's where we emerging market corporate uh, fund uh, are proposing uh, really decent uh, yields and spreads. And so we are really honored uh, to, to have to be able to serve to clients and uh, really it's a pleasure to be marked and uh, regarded by uh, Rankia Pro uh, as the best manager of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here again. And last but certainly not least, the fan selector of the year. The combination of the art and science involved in fund selection provides for a challenging but rewarding opportunity for fund selectors as they perform their fiduciary duty as capital allocators. The three finalists for our fund selector of the year are Pete Lan from IBS Capital Alice, Neil Clare from Fankest, and Gimel Delet Jano Farias from Ofi Asset Management. And the 2021 Rankia Pro from Selector of the Year Award goes to Gimel Dalet Jano Farias from Ofi Asset Management. Congratulations, Gimel Dalet. We are joined live by Gimel Dalet now in Paris as she accepts her award. Hello. Well, Thank you, thank you very much for this award. What an excellent way to start the year. First of all, um, I would like to thank Rankia Pro Magazine for this initiative, but also for promoting the profession of fund selector. 
thank you also to Ofi AM for the trust that they place in me on a daily basis. And uh, when a years ago, when I started my career, and some years later, when I took the responsibility of the team. And uh, finally, but not least, thank you to my team for their effort, motivation, and of course, the love for the fun selection. Thank you. Thank you, Gimaldalet, and congratulations again. Since we have these three award-winning asset management professionals with us, we couldn't ignore the opportunity to host a short roundtable discussion on investing trends for 2022, as we are so that this will result in an extremely insightful discussion for our live audience. So let's get right into it. A few months ago, there was a heated discussion on whether inflation was transitory or not. And now we are experiencing in Europe the highest inflation rates in nearly 30 years. Which long-term effects do you think it will have in the markets? Sergey? I think by now it's very clear that inflation is here to stay with us, at least for the majority of 2022, which calls of course for higher rates in the global markets in general. So to be able to uh, protect from those, I think it's very important for investors uh, to try to minimize their uh, duration in the portfolios, at least within the fixed income part. And in this sense, uh, emerging markets, uh, specifically emerging market corporate space, uh, is a very suitable proposition. Uh, the other uh, attractive feature you know, in this environment uh, from this uh, rather big asset class by now uh, is actually a high spread which also provides a buffer against the, the, uh, the effect uh, on the markets that higher rates uh, will imply. So I think it's very important to watch what the markets uh, and the Fed and the ECB and other global banks bring, bring us. Uh, but I think uh, inflation is indeed a problem here to stay with us for some time. Thank you, Sergey, for your insightful answer. Um, Gimel Dalet, I am sure this is extremely relevant in your role as head of fund research and analysis. What is your view? Yeah, thank you, Carla. It is true that uh, a few months ago, um, the speech of most of the managers was in favor uh, of uh, transitory inflation. Uh, this has clearly changed, and now the consensus uh, uh, pleads for the end of low inflation regime, but without a clear view about the future level of inflation. Um, we have this debate between those who uh, think that with the reopening of the economies, the supply chain problems will normalize, uh, and others that support the thesis according to which the increase on salaries, the climate change transition, are just some of the factors that could generate a stronger than expected inflation. Um, an increase of the level of inflation could be healthy for the economy, and I think that this idea is now well spread among investors but uh, until a certain level. If inflation is too important, then it could damage the economy dynamics and the rate of growth. Um, for this, uh, um, the intervention of central sorry, the intervention of central banks and their communication are uh, an essential part of the equation and need to be closely monitored. Thank you, Gimel Dalet, for your answer. Please, Frederick, Please feel free to share your opinion on how inflation uh, will affect the markets in 2022. Yes, I mean, for 2022, we see that it brings a, a huge amount of volatility, obviously. But I mean, uh, with regard to to, for, to know how long this, this, um, this inflation is going to be with us, I think it's, it's important to look at uh, the issue that supply chain bottlenecks have actually uh, bring to, to those figures. I mean, they're probably the main catalyst of the higher prices, uh, and most of it is actually transitory. Um, the walls of supply chain bottlenecks are probably behind us, but moving from peak congestion to uh, a healthy flow of, um, of um, 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 supply chain will, will definitely take some time. As such, yes, uh, inflation is probably here to stay for a, a couple of next quarter. Then uh, on the emerging market, I will definitely uh, join Sergey that uh, we are encouraged to see that many EM countries like the Russia, um, Brazil, Mexico, South Africa, South Korea have actually raised their rates ahead of the US 
That means that they have a, an attract, attractive interest rate differentials, which potential, potentially create some sort of uh, carry trades. So we don't think that uh, uh, compared to 2013 taper tantrum, this time uh, the US Fed tapering will uh, negatively impact emerging markets. Thank you very much, Frederick. Since we are talking uh, about inflation, I would like to continue this roundtable discussion by asking, in this inflationary environment, what kind of asset classes could you consider to overcome inflation? Gimel Delet, what is the current sentiment from your side? Yes, um, well, um, since last December, um, uh, uh, among the fund research and analysis team, we have started collect, uh, uh, collecting the views of the managers uh, we were with, and some topics stand out. Um, I think that diversification remains key, um, as uncertainty, uncertainty is too important. Um, and as I said, until a certain level, uh, inflation could be healthy. Uh, but we need to monitor the central bank communication and other risks as geopolitics and, and COVID as well. But uh, in this inflationary environment, uh, investing on companies that have pricing power, I think is, is essential. And uh, pricing power was actually one of the most quoted topics uh, from the views that we have collected from managers. Uh, also uh, among our buy list, um, we have complete uh, our offer uh, with, uh, with a, a new product on inflation bond. And um, on the diversification side, I think that uh, gold or uh, other products that have exposure to precious metals could be a good hedge uh, in, uh, in this environment. And finally, um, as uh, Sergey and, and Fred uh, said before, uh, I think that emerging markets will be uh, also beneficiaries. On one hand, because of the attractive valuation compared to developed markets, but also because of because some of the emerging markets uh, are producers of materials and commodities. Thank you, Gimel. Um, Frederick. Yes, I mean, <clears throat> given uh, the, the macroeconomic backdrop uh, and should uh, COVID-19 situation improve, we expect equity to do well uh, and investors to be more selective with a focus on valuation, fundamentals and uh, quality. As such, we believe that um, emerging markets uh, with a quality growth uh, approach should do okay in this environment, being more resilient during period of high volatility, but also offer good long-term uh, opportunities. I think with a selective approach, um, the asset class should tick all the boxes uh, with attractive valuation, strong fundamentals, and uh, with a quality focus. On the, on the ETF side, because we, we also have some ETF, I mean, we would favor cyclical sectors that are the most positively correlated with rising real yields, and as such, uh, fintech and U.S. infrastructure development should benefit from uh, these economic conditions. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, Sergey? I will agree with both Fred and Gimel. I think, uh, as I said already, so emerging market corporates are an attractive place to hide from this, uh, let's say, inflationary scare. But uh, also very important uh, is to observe, uh, you know, the other geopolitical and, you know, global risks happening from time to time, be it Turkey, China, Russia or anywhere else. So uh, from this perspective, uh, diversification is really key because you don't know what will uh, be the source of tension or problem uh, next month or next quarter. It's, it's the world has become very volatile and very fast changing right so i think uh, it's very important to be diversified uh, emerging markets do offer such uh, such an option and and therefore uh, one needs to be selective and uh, you know to to of course possibly avoid uh, the problematic situations before they get priced in but very importantly i think it's very uh, it's it's very beneficial for active asset managers uh, to take part in such situations when they do occur and when uh, uh, risks get priced in, uh, such as, for instance, uh, in, in Russia or Ukraine, there are some uh, decent propositions already now. Uh, so for those, uh, you know, taking uh, certain uh, positions or let's say doing a, a measured approach towards those, I think it can uh, be quite beneficial long term. And as always, we always encourage uh, our investors to, to, to look long term and therefore through the crisis beat uh, even omicron uh, or or covid more broadly 
uh, or be it uh, you know country level or, or other type of uh, crisis. So uh, I think staying uh, focused on always having opportunities in your portfolio, but in a diversified manner is, is the perfect combination for a success long term. Thank you very much, Sergey. In 2022, we will probably see a big turning point uh, in ESG in the asset management uh, industry. Um, Gimel Delet, uh, what kind of changes do you see coming this year in ESG? Well, I, I think that we started to see this turning point uh, two years ago, uh, and then uh, this has accelerated last year with regulation that has put big pressure uh, for asset managers in terms of ESG requirements. Um, a lot of work have be, has been done, and uh, a lot of work needs to be done. But uh, at this stage, uh, we need to be careful and continue to analyze strategy by strategy and methodology by methodology, I think. Because even if regulation has put this pressure on asset managers, we cannot be sure on the quality of all the products that identify itself as ESG. Uh, for this year, um, I think that the big question uh, will be notably uh, beyond the quality uh, of the data for reporting requirements. And another subject will be on, on disclosure classification, I think, um, as some of the products that have been classified as Article 8, uh, 8 sorry, or 9 uh, could be reviewed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Gimel Delet. Um, Sergey, what is your view on the role ESG will play in the asset management industry? Yes, I, I agree. Uh, definitely, there will be a big uh, focus on uh, the exact classification and the requirements, uh, both from the top down uh, level, what regulators uh, want and how they see uh, different sectors and, and companies and countries, uh, but also from the bottom up, if I may, uh, from you know individual uh, investors and individual uh, issuers actually uh, following specific uh, trends and doing certain actions. And it's very important to combine those two, so both top down and, and bottom up, uh, in order to, to still be able to invest and generate performance. Uh, because ultimately the uh, the fiduciary uh, duty is still there, so we still need to generate uh, performance as well. Uh, but of course, with the uh, with the with the big focus on on ESG, because uh, in the current world it's it's getting increasingly important. And let's say the the mishaps in in ESG front for certain issuers uh, will no longer be tolerated and just overlooked, uh, but in fact will uh, will will really matter for the prices and for the uh, performance. So it's really important to identify uh, the right uh, names uh, that we have in the portfolio. So from this point of view, I think uh, it's it's super crucial uh, to have uh, an in-house analysis uh, on top of the external providers that that we may want to use, uh, you know, as as an in, as an independent verification. Uh, but definitely, uh, one needs to know exactly what they have in the portfolio and and, and follow the stories. So. I think uh, ESG will be one focus area for us uh, in 2022 for sure. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, Frederick, uh, would you like to add anything? Yes, um, I I, th I agree with uh, with um, both. Actually, it's increasing in importance from our clients. That's something that we discussed uh, more and more, and. Um, we know that there is a lot of the regulation coming in, in force this year with regard to disclosure and reporting and transparency. Um, obviously, I think we, we have also to bear in mind that I believe that import investors that really matter about ESG will still need to do their own uh, ESG due diligence, as mentioned before, to make sure that everything is actually properly uh, implemented uh, in the port for you. At Mira Assets, this has been a very long journey since we have started to integrate ESG in our process back in 2015. And this is something that we have continuously uh, uh, improved in our port for you. And we are very pleased about, you know, where we are going and the direction of, uh, of travel uh, that we are uh, implementing in our portfolios. In, we have also launched a series of ETF that also uh, give access to a couple of sustainable themes, um, um, such as clean tech, renewable energy producer, clean water, and so on. So very much uh, involved into this uh, ESG trends. 
Thank you very much, Frederick, for your insightful answer. Uh, to end this roundtable discussion, I have a question for each of you. Which could be the top investment trends in 2022? Kim Adelet? Yes. Well, I'm afraid to repeat myself uh, uh, as I commented earlier about the asset classes that could overcome inflation. Um, but uh, among, among equities, um, in, a, in a scenario of uh, rate increase, uh, I think that having a bias to cyclical seems to be a good option, uh, as well uh, as I said earlier um, to the companies that have pricing power. Secondly, uh, emerging markets uh, seems to be a good place uh, to be, equities and debt. Um, and finally, having some diversification uh, as precious metals uh, could be, could be uh, as I said earlier, a, a hedge to inflation. But of course, uh, these views uh, need to be updated with the, with the news uh, uh, on coming months. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Kimel Delet. Sergey? Yeah, I think on top of the, uh, of the trends that we have already discussed, such as inflation, ESG and others, uh, I think it's very important to follow the, uh, you know, stories that are specifically relevant after, uh, let's say, in this post-COVID world, if you want. Uh, we are all hoping that it's, uh, you know, gradually going away and uh, the world is coming back to normal, at least as far as uh, demand is concerned. I think we're going there now. There are supply uh, chain interruptions and that leads also to inflation. But still, uh, I think uh, health-wise, we're going in the right direction. Um, that said, uh, I think one particular area where it could affect uh, the world and financial markets in 2022 is commodities indeed. So energy uh, is one big topic. So with oil uh, being at the highs uh, for the past uh, four or five years, uh, I think it's, it's definitely uh, worth uh, following the, the, the policies of the large producers uh, because it can, uh, well, ultimately this is a, a very important supportive factor, uh, both for EM and but also, of course, for, for higher inflation. So um, if it changes, it will matter a lot. And then on the commodity, uh, hard and soft commodities, uh, it's also uh, important to, to, to see if there are uh, big evolution uh, or changes uh, around China and Chinese GDP growth. Uh, so for now, cyclically, uh, China is, is somewhat slowing down. So there's some stimulus uh, expected going forward. And that could, of course, uh, be a big thing uh, for the first half of, of this year and maybe longer. Uh, so it's it's very important to, to follow those uh, trends indeed. Uh, and ultimately, you know, this big uh, story about, you know, fixed income versus equity allocations is, is also, uh, you know, could, could this, this story could gain a lot of traction because uh, the rates are going up. Uh, the equity seems to be, well, at least uh, visually uh, overpriced. So uh, there will be uh, many people asking questions, you know, what they uh, what they do for their in their portfolios for the next two three years maybe so it's it's uh 2022 will be a very uh important and interesting year thank you very much sergey um frederick uh are you optimistic about the outlook for 2022 so uh, i'm i'm going to echo uh um, both of them they, they, that's very true diversification and sticking to uh to um to, to to the long term view i think it's important and in that regard i would say that uh, i would see that using short-term volatility uh to build long-term exposure to quality uh um a company in emerging markets that get exposure to structural themes such as financial inclusion healthcare uh discretionary spending mobility obviously including the tech basket with uh 5g penetration clouds ai and evs is is, uh, is probably a good opportunity should you have a long-term uh investment horizon thank you very much frederick uh, well, Frederic gimel Velet and Sergey, uh, thank you for your time and, and insights. It's been a privilege uh, to discuss these topics with you. Congratulations again on your award. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who joined us live uh, for the second edition of the Rankia Pro Europe Award Ceremony. We look forward to seeing all of you at our upcoming events. Thank you. <laughs>